This is MLOps Zoom Camp Session 4. We are talking about model deployment. And in this video, we will talk about combining what we did in the previous lesson, deploying a model with a web service through Flask with our model registry. So what we did previously is we put our model like linear regression model. This is something we created in the very first session in one of the first videos. So we took this model and we deployed it as a web service. So we have two functions here, prepare features and make predictions. And then finally, we wrap everything in a predict endpoint function. This function is exposed as an endpoint um, that we can query and use it basically to make predictions. Right? This is what we did last time. And uh, here, this is the model that we got from the first session. But in module two, in section two, we talked about model registry and we want to use model registry now to get a model from there. We can get the model that is currently deployed in production or a model that we can refer by run ID. And for that, I prepared a model. So this will be a random forest model. So I'm actually running MLflow locally and it is connected to a bucket, MLflow model selexy. So it has to be unique. So I put my name there and this is how I run it. Wait, let me just start it again because uh, like I installed Boto3, so now it should be, uh, should be no problem. Uh, anyways, this is how I do this. It's MLflow server and then I'm doing this in a folder MLflow on the remote computer. Then backend store is SQLite. I didn't want to bother with setting up Postgres. This would be a better option, of course, with Postgres, but I just went with um, SQLite here in this particular case. But the uh, artifact root is S3 location. This is the S3 location. So this is how I run it. So this is the tagging server. And the experiment I have is green tag consideration. And um, this is uh, these are the functions that I took from Christian from the I think homework. So here, instead of prepare data, I prepare dictionaries. So I only do convert to dictionaries. Mm, and then we get the dictionaries from here. And uh, the interesting part happens here. So these are the parameters of our random forest model. Then we lock these parameters. Then we create dictionary vectorizer, random forest regressor using these parameters. We fit the transformer, we fit the, fit the model. Then we apply the transformer to validation data, apply the model to validation data, compute MSC, lock this, then lock the actual model. And we also lock the dictionary vectorizer. So all of these should sound familiar to you by now. And this is how it looks in MLflow. So we have the model here, right? This is the model. This is the run of this model. And this is the dictionary vectorizer. Now we want to take this model with this run. Of course, we can actually promote this model to production, but um, I will just use the run ID uh, with the model promoted to production. The flow is exactly the same, but I will just use the ID, uh, the run ID, and we will see how now we can put this to our Flask application. So for that, I created a folder, this one ML service, uh, web service ML flow. So let me copy some things from there. So we'll take our pip file, test, uh, what else do I need and predict? And I will move them to the new location. So i just copy them um, and I'll close this one, this one and open yeah, this predict. So now here, instead of using this lean regression, we want to get the model from here. And this will be our run ID. Run ID. Mm -hmm. And then actually, like we can use this thing, right? We can just copy this from here. So we'll copy this. We need to have this uh, import and ML flow here. Uh, run ID. Locked model, I will replace here this um, hard coded run ID with a parameter. And then we will just call this a model. Right? So we load the model. Then we also need to uh, load the dic dictionary vectorizer. Remember, it's saved as an artifact. So then uh, it becomes pretty annoying because we need to use the client now to download artifacts. Mm -hmm. I don't like that I cannot just uh, use PyFunk here. So uh, Christian actually shows how to use the client. So I'll use the client here. Client, and I think I need the import. So client, and then a run ID. I'll put it here, like as a parameter. And then we also need to have this MLflow tracking URI, right? For us, 
it is uh, I will copy it from here yeah and client uh, I wish I had autocomplete I don't remember how to what's the name you know what I'll just copy I'll do this first in Jupyter notebook and then I will copy the code to uh, to VS Code. I should have configured it to have autocomplete, mm, but since I'm already recording this, maybe next time. Download artifacts and then a run ID. This is our run ID. So run ID would be this one, all right? And then uh, path is dict vectorizer bin. Mm, I think that's it. Uh, yeah, it downloads it somewhere. Uh, this is the path. Yeah, let us just use this path. Temp location is also fine, I guess. Um, in order not to contaminate the current folder, we can just use the temp location. And then we will have something like with open path uh, sf out uh, pickle load f out and it will be our dictionary vectorizer something like this path is not defined of course now uh, yeah i need to say that it's uh, binary and i want to open it in the read mode now it works now it's our dictionary vectorizer so let me copy this code here and this thing here so client yeah we already have a client i'll put this thing here and this one here and I'll just add the print statement downloading the dict vectorizer to and then this will be the path and then we have the dictionary vectorizer we have the model and I think that should be it so let me let me test it so I'll go to our web service mlflow folder we already have pip file here we do not have mlflow in our pip file so we need to do pip -inf install mlflow uh, and now because it's the first time we run here in this directory pip -inf sees that this is a new directory it doesn't know uh, what kind of environment should be in this directory so it creates the virtual environment again and it installs everything yeah, it should also install other things uh, i'm hoping it uses uh, this pip file yeah you see it just added mlflow here just now and then it should also install other uh, things maybe it will not maybe i just need to do pip -inf install yeah we'll check now uh, pip -inf shell and now if we do uh, python predict we'll see if we need to install okay pip -inf install bottle 3 i forgot about it but apparently flask is there because it didn't complain about it okay now let's run it run id not found i am wondering uh, why is that because i think we need to also specify the experiment all right so let me okay still not working so i'll, I'll remove that it shouldn't be here mm, yeah something is wrong because it, it, there is now this this ml runs which shouldn't be here yeah i think what i need to do is set tracking beauty i don't think i did this flow set tracking beauty this one and the client should also have this one let me try okay that was probably the problem yeah maybe this port 9696 let me see if docker is still running there yeah it is so let me just remove this and now we can run it it's working so now we download the dictionary vectorizer that we save here then we load the model we should be able to test it now we still have this test test.py which we can run and it works now you see that the, the prediction is different because the model is different so now it uses the different version of the model actually it could also be a good practice sometime to add the model version here 
in the re response. So it's uh, so run uh, run ID could be the model version, right? And now we just do, and we get the model version as well in our payload. So we know which exact model generated this prediction. So this is how we do this, but I must admit this looks pretty ugly, right? So I don't um, I don't like this. Like first of all, we need to do this ML flow client. We need to create a ML flow client. We need to download artifacts. Then we need to save it to some temporary location. It would be much easier if it was just in one place, right? If we can just do load model and it would load everything that we need here. For that, instead of having two things, instead of having a dictionary vectorizer and instead of uh, having a random forest model independently, we can put them in a pipeline, in one pipeline, and then we can lock the pipeline as the model and we can store in the, in the registry this pipeline. And then we will not need to store the artifact, the dictionary vectorizer separately. It will be a part of the model already. Let me show you how to do this. So for that, we need to import from scikit-learn pipeline, import make pipeline. And we will use this to make a pipeline. The pipeline will be quite simple. So we will have these two things in the pipeline. So first in the pipeline, we will run the dictionary vectorizer and then we will run random forest in this order. Right? And then the pipeline looks like that. So there are two steps. So first step is vectorizer and then random forest regress. All right, and this will be our pipeline. And I will now replace this of this thing with the pipeline. And we can now replace this whole thing with just pipeline.fit. And then it would fit dictionaries. So we will not need to do this transform. Here again, we also will just do pipeline predict and we pass the dictionaries from here. Dictionary predict. Yeah, we don't need this thing here. And then uh, yeah, we need to lock model and we don't need the vectorizer anymore. Let me see if I didn't forget anything. So make pipeline, then we fit pipeline, then we run predict. Then we still uh, look at the RMS here, then we lock the metric and we lock the model. Let me test it. It seems to work. So RMS here is still uh, the same, I think. And let, let, let's see how it looks like in uh, in MLflow. Okay, it seems to work. We don't have the artifact anymore. We have the run ID. So this is the new run ID. Now we can simplify our project. So we can just, uh, we can remove the client. We can remove this thing and the run ID will be different. Right. And then, yeah, we don't have dictionary vectorizer anymore. We just have the model. And then we do model predict features, and then it's predictions. Uh, it becomes super simple. Yeah, I think that's it. So prepare features still stays here. It prepares the dictionary, but let's test it. Where is our flask up? So I think it's automatically uh, restarted. So now we can test it again, and you see the prediction is still the same. Model version is different because this is the pipeline. Yeah, the code becomes simpler. So let me clean it a little bit. And yeah, this is one option. Um, of course, so this one, so uh, we'll look at this runs. So we retrieve a specific run here, right? And if we look at the documentation for PyFunk, we can see that we can use the run ID, right? So the this is some flow run ID and then the relative path. In our case, it's run, run ID slash model. But we can also point it to a stage, right? So we can say model name and stage. And this is how we did it here in the model registry. So you can just replace the URI, the URL there, URI with this. I think, yeah, this is how we did it here, right? In this test model. So now if you have stage there, you can do it this way. I still like doing it with run ID because with run ID, I know the exact version of uh, the, the model. With pipeline, the code becomes a bit cleaner. We don't need to carry this uh, dictionary vectorizer with us in a as a separate artifact. Uh, we just store it in the pipeline. Okay, that's actually not all what I wanted to show you. There is another thing. So the other thing is the problem is that you see this tracking URI. 
So we set the tracking URI here. This might be problematic. What if now something happens with our tracking server? Let's say the server is down, something happened with our machine where the server is hosted, and uh, yeah, we, we need to host our model. So this should still work, right? Because this the model is in memory of the process. But what if, um, let's say, we start receiving a lot more traffic and our deployment with the models scales up and we need to create a new instance of the model. So now let's let's do this. So now we are creating a new instance, but now this new instance is trying to connect to the tracking server, but the tracking server is not available. Right? The tracking server is down, so it cannot connect to the tracking server and it cannot start. And now if we try to send a request, we cannot establish a connection because we cannot start our server. Now we become dependent on the tracking server. And this is a problem, right? So we don't want the tracking server to cause any issues. And because, you know, like many things can happen with this server. A way to solve this uh, would be to, instead of using the tracking server and use this kind of thing. So we need, here we need the tracking server to actually convert this kind of path to an S3 location. But you see that we actually can directly point to the S3 location here without the server. Right? So here, I think even like if we go to MLflow, here we have the full path, right? So I can just copy it. Um, that would be logit uh, model. Let me make it an F string as well. So then, uh, of course, here we also need to know experiment ID, but then run ID would be this one, right? And we don't need this anymore. So then we can just directly point to the S3 location. Let me start it. Now it should be able to start without the tracking server. Now we can do the test and it works. And so in this way is actually preferred because you remove the dependency on the tracking server. You go to S3 to fetch your model directly. And this thing can become like you can customize it. So the way you do this, so for example, uh, through env environmental variables, you do os get env and you pass this as an environmental variable and uh, something like this. So let me stop this thing. And then I do export and this thing, uh, sorry, run ID, run ID. And then if you, let's say, deploy this through Kubernetes, then you can just simply in your Kubernetes say that for this deployment, run ID is this. And then, oops, it should be in the wrong terminal window. Okay, so now it should use this uh, run ID and then let's test it. Yeah, now it works. So, and then you can take this package to Docker like we did in the previous video, and then you can make it configurable through environmental variables. And then in your deployment in Kubernetes, for example, if you need to update to a different version of the model, you can just set a different run ID, for example, or you can find a way to make it even better like using the model registry and using the staging. Um, but I will not do it in this video. You can come up with a system that is more convenient, that is most convenient for you. So okay, this is all I wanted to show you in this video. So in this video, we saw how to get the model from the uh, model service using the run ID. And then we saw how to remove the dependency on the tracking server and we could fetch the model directly from S3. And one of the other things we did here is we um, also get rid of this dictionary vectorizer because like it's annoying to carry it with us as an artifact so we put it in the pipeline and now our code become became cleaner okay that's all for this video and in the next one we probably will take care of batch deployment or streaming i don't know what exactly uh, uh, how i will feel uh, what i will record but either of them will be the next video so you'll see that soon bye